Okay, so we have the Cromery mostly con or, uh, disassembled. We're gonna take the coil cores off the shaft and the copper slip rings um, where the brushes meet and rotate on. We're gonna take those off too. You can see the see the brush marks down here. The carbon it's starting to wear in nice and smooth. So that's that's positive. Um, so basically, I'm going to take this this wire, and we're going to wrap it on these coils once they're off. Okay, so now I took my solder spool, and I took all the solder off the one gauge, and then I've cut two halves from either side, and then I plan on putting it like this. I'm going to epoxy it on there so that I can spin the wind the windings of this 28 gauge around there and I'll be able to build it up more on this side. So next step is to mix up a little bit of uh, epoxy. So, get it nice and uniform. So, there we're getting a pretty uniform coating. Okay. Now what I'd like to have happen is just to be able to apply one of those. Actually that does seem like it's going to stick pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and do both sides. And I think that will work quite nicely. I might do a secondary coat after this is dried on the front just to Make sure it's all bonded. Um, I've got the um, plastic epoxy to the metal. And I'm just checking for clearances here before I bother winding it up because it's going to take me like 10 hours to wind this by hand. So I want to make sure I can clear everything without having to adjust the cut any of the plastic off the ends there and it looks like this is going to spin quite nicely between the magnet stack so it'll clear just barely. I can adjust it so the stacks are very close by. In the future I'm obviously going to put a radius on here. My next iteration on this machine is going to have a radius here. Um, okay so I've got one spool wound here, 28 gauge winding and you can see my center steel core there. This took a long time, but looks good. I've got a, oh shoot. Thank God I got epoxy on there. Good. This is my other coil, or spool, which I'm gonna coil onto mag wire around it to make a coil, and I've used JB Weld here to weld a drill bit on here so I can use my drill to spin this while I wrap the wire around it from this larger coil here which I'll show you shortly. And now in order to match this one I used on this one I used um, part of a soldering spool, an old soldering spool, so I took the solder off the spool and then used the plastic. I don't have any more of those soldering spools, so I've got some of these Teflon plumber tapes and I'm taking them apart to use the plastic here. So I've got these cut into pieces and I'm going to glue these onto this, this one like so. Again with the JB Weld. This is really strong, this JB Weld, but it's not epoxy. It takes like 24 hours to cure. Um, this epoxy here only takes maybe an hour. So I use this for going over top of the 
the wire once I get it on there and then I'll use the GP weld for everything else because epoxy wouldn't do that and allow you to spin it with the drill. Is I'm gonna get my drill and you can see I've got my drill bit that we secured with epoxy on the end and Okay, so now we've got our drill attached to our spool, which is kind of a backyard way of uh, using a machine. So still, still some work, but a lot less work than doing it manually. I just kind of want to keep it even. You can see it's uh, it's going on there. I'm just gonna actually I think I'm gonna spool it this way. A little bit less weight on the less weight and torque on the uh, connection point between the drill bit that I'm gonna epoxy down there in the spool, so less likely to break off on the vertical versus horizontal. We have our coils successfully wound and ready to be connected. I don't have them connected there at the center yet. I'm just going to make sure everything moves correctly. Clearances are good. Epoxy's on. So I'm going to solder this. And I'm going to put the motor back together, the generator back together. So that's what I'm doing now. So I've got my slip ring, copper slip ring on up there. 
And the main thing I want to check for here is uh, continuity. Continuity and that there is none between the slip ring and any of these other metal parts. So see that I'm going to test the slip ring in the main metal shaft. There is no continuity, so I've got it insulated, and I don't want continuity between this bottom one here either. Again, there isn't. You can't see me touching it. No continuity. Now I've got all my uh, connections made. I've got the coils connected to the slip rings and one another. And oh, it's the last thing I need to do is to drop this. So there's one slip ring and I'll touch the other slip ring. There we go, 336. Roughly 336, so 340 we'll call it ohms of resistance in the coil. So today is the day. We're firing up the revamped Romney converter here. I've got it connected to my power supply. And everything is looking fabulous. I've got my magnet stacks, my coils, everything's wound. I've got um, <coughs> approximately 6,000 feet of 28 gauge mag wire between the four coils. It's wound in the correct sequence according to that diagram there. And the magnetic stacks are in the correct sequence as well. You can see here. So, north. South, north. So series, and then the coils are wound in series in the correct sequence. Everything's good. The uh, the results we're looking for is a blue spark on the output, and that it speeds up when shorted out above 3,000, roughly 3,000 RPM, or at higher speeds. I don't have a tachometer here, so I'm just going to be estimating, but I know this thing will go up past 3,000. And hopefully everything's secure enough and it doesn't blow up in my face. Um, it's pretty, pretty chunky, but I think it's going to be good. I'm excited. So once I get the blue spark and it's speeding up on the output, then I'm going to um, check the waveforms and go from there. So for now, I'm going to turn it on and I'll probably have to manually give it a push to get it going. Oh, there we go.
I'd say that is successful. And I'm gonna just hook up the uh, the equipment to measure the uh, waveform on the output and check that. But overall, I'd say that's successful. Um, it is speeding up slightly. Definitely not decreasing its speed when I short out the output. So that's fabulous because the old one was doing that. And I think I just need to uh, get a tachometer and it will be speeding up noticeably. Also, the input is not super efficient on this. All, this motor isn't the most efficient and the shaft is bent to some degree. So I think once I think, fix that and then optimize optimize everything so the bearings are better, the shaft is straight, better motor. Um, I'll probably add another two stacks of magnets, one at every 90 degrees versus 180 degrees. But overall this is much, much more successful than the prior test that I had with larger gauge wire. So we're moving in the right direction. I'm 